and now 60% of magistrates' cases are now held in secret behind closed doors. So something that used to be something that used to be available for the public to sit in most cases, now 60% of magistrates' cases are now tried behind closed doors. So mm. the press can't attend, the public can't attend, decisions are made, and basically it means the magistrates are becoming almost almost autonomous in yeah. terms of their decision making process. I just wondered if you were aware of this and what does it signify in terms mm -hmm. of trials, freedom and democracy as we as we go forward? I wasn't aware of that. I was aware there is cases every now and again behind closed doors, but there should be good reasons for that. Yeah. I didn't realise it was like anywhere near 60%. Yes. I thought it'd be in single figures. Yeah, it's increased dramatically mm. over the past few years. Yeah, it's the wrong road to go down. <clears throat> Not only do we have to have justice and deliver justice, justice has to be seen to be done. And that is why we're losing trust in all our institutions because we don't think they're on our side anymore. And for them to go behind closed doors to make decisions just makes me go, well, they're, they're hiding something. Mm. Um, the wrong way to go. Um, I don't understand why they've done this. I don't understand why... Well, I, th I think the reason they did it was <clears throat> it was a big backlog <clears throat> of cases to be tried. So they introduced this <clears throat> closed-door uh, trial, basically, to try and expedite and speed up the process. But from something that was meant to be used a little bit uh, on occasion, it's now for expediency and convenience escalated to 60% of magistrates' cases. Yeah. But what that means is there's all sorts of cases being tried that we do, we aren't aware of where decisions are made yeah. and nobody has a right of redress mm. at that point. That's what it means. And it's kind of, well, it's like the rest of the public sector now, isn't it? Everything, there is there there, there is no right of reply. There is no mm. right of uh, of of appeal because there's nothing to appeal to basically mm. and when the courts are doing that that's even worse isn't it how mm. do you possibly get your case heard or publicize your case in, in these situations and and it's crept up on us like a lot of things has, has, have crept up and most people are, are not aware of this they're not and i don't understand how it would speed things up by not having it open to the public you may want the court case to be shorter in time well there might be a reason for that but that doesn't stop someone sitting in the public gallery to listen to that or the press listening to it. It's the only way we avoid corruption mm. is to have public scrutiny. Mm. And if no one turns up to witness the court case, well, at least the opportunity was there for someone to Correct. go. Yeah. But to have it behind closed doors stinks. And the re I think the reason being is <clears throat> if there is a public there or the press, if the magistrates are not seen to deliberate for a reasonable period of time or discuss it... Yeah. There's a natural, t if, you're, if you're sitting as a magistrate and you can see public <clears throat> sitting there and it's a complex case, you need to be seen to deliberate and think about it and go and, you know, if you've ever been a magistrate, I have over speeding fines. If you ever go there, they have to go away and deliberate, and have mm. a chat, ask a few questions or whatever. But in this case, they don't. Yeah. They can almost make the decision unilaterally. Yeah, you know, yes, he was speeding, we'll give him five hundred thousand pounds and give him what points. Of, but... It's gone beyond speeding to other cases as well. Mm. And I think this Kevin Lister case was another example. He was trying to defend himself in this situation. I think, you know, there wasn't really a proper process followed and he's ended up um, with with his job, uh, losing his job and it being upheld, basically. And that's why we need people sat in the public gallery because the people in the courts, so the solicitors, the people who work for the courts, they do as they're told by the magistrate. Yes. The magistrate's extremely powerful. It's his yeah. court. Yes. You're in his or her court. Yes. You'll do as you're told. Yeah. So the magistrate has a lot of power and a lot of influence. We stop them abusing that by having those courts open to the public. Correct. So members of the public can make sure that judge isn't a tyrant. Yeah. That judge didn't let his personal feelings get in the way of making that judgment. That judge wasn't making was making inappropriate remarks about this case. That's why we need people and give them the opportunity to sit in the case. Yeah. To sit in the and court. that's the essence of what a jury is about mm. at the end of the day, isn't it? To allow the people to make a decision about these mm. things. But again, we see in society this this freedom, the involvement of the people being taken away. More and more things. It goes are being back taken to away. experts know best. Yes. So the judge, as an expert, he knows better than you. 
he will tell you what's legal yeah. and what's what's lawful yeah. now. You'll just do as you're told. And it's that authoritarianism, but it's also that bureaucracy creeping into everything as in we know better than Correct. you. Yes. And we'll we'll, we'll run rough shot up your rough shot over your rights. Yeah. Because we we're better than you. Yeah. We know more than you. Yes, it is that, isn't it? It's basically saying these are the cognoscenti, these are the <coughs> the elites, the priests of our yeah. society who will make decisions on your behalf yeah. or on your future without any kind of scrutiny or or, mm. or public um, check, checks being in place, any kind of checking. Pro I, yeah, I, I, agree. I was quite shocked when I read it. I didn't realise. If you like that video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and comment. And if you like what I'm saying about running for Mayor of Greater Manchester, then stick around. Tell your family, tell your friends. It's the only way I'm going to have a chance of winning is a grassroots movement. So be part of that movement and hit that bell. Thanks.